Hello everybody, Last Hattery here. Welcome back to the Turing Test. I think this little area up here is just for me to like... Oh, 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 oh. Ah! Oh, fuck you. <laughs> well, how the fuck? Okay, okay, fine. Shut up, 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 shut up. Did the ISA build you, Tom? As the child of the ISA, I have been given authority aboard this station. I was designed by the ISA and the Ashiyama Corporation, designed in California, assembled in China. But here on Europa, I constructed myself. Huh. Have you heard of the Turing test, Ava? Yeah, you told me it's about it. It's a test to see if a computer can successfully impersonate a human. Yeah, can you? In the original Turing test, a human judge has two conversations, okay. one with a machine and one with another human. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine and which is with a human. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test if the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation is with a machine and which is with a human. Do you think you'd pass the Turing test? I am quite capable of polite conversation. No. Wouldn't you say? You scare the shit out of me, man. <laughs> like, I don't trust you at all. Like, you're a fucking creep. That's all I know, man. You fucking scare the shit out of me. How the f- Okay, let's try this. Oh, fuck. I know what I gotta do. Hold on. How the fuck am I gonna get this up there, though? Oh, because I go like this. Well, let's solve that. I am too smart. I'm not that great, honestly. Boom, boom. There, I saved the day. I saved the Europa team. You're all very welcome. Well... I thought I was doing good. I'm guessing we need to go... Come with me, please? You stay right there. If I need you, I'll be back. I need... Maybe not. Hold on. Huh. Okay, hold on. I'm missing something. So this is where my test starts, and we've kind of cleared out this room already, as far as I know, unless you can go up there. Crawl, baby. Ava. We are playing Ava. Well, what the fuck's over there? Why would I need this bridge here? I don't get that. Like, what's in there? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I have all what I need right now because you just go like this. I'm so tired. I shouldn't be allowed to play video games at all. <laughs> fucking A. I've been walking around with the things I needed to complete the fucking puzzle for like a solid minute. Oopsies. Okay, I think this little screen right here has show, shows all the fucking tests I've completed, maybe? And once it's filled up, the game's The Turing over. test has been criticized. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to think, but rather, its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Well, 
Have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? Uh, no. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are passed Chinese sentences through a slot in the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. Okay. Tom, you kind of freak me out, man. Just a little bit. Like, you just give me the heebie-jeebies. Okay. There's in the Chinese break. room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the correct responses, the person on the other side of the door is convinced you are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not. Shit. Because with the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. This is the problem with the Turing test. A computer can pass the Turing test, having convinced a human they are having a polite conversation, while the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the people passing Chinese words are reading from instruction books? Yeah. Didn't think about that one, did you, motherfucker? Okay, I get it. Ah! Nope. I don't get what it's telling me to push in. Oh! How the fuck did that work? Okay, oh my god. Hold on, let me get this down. It's that. Got it. Oh, I made it! Ah! <laughs> oh, God. That was- that was a little difficult. I get the bridge thing now. Okay. Well. I may be a machine, but I personally do not believe I am stuck inside the Chinese room. Right. You would say that. I could peer inside your databases at any time, Tom. Or pause your operation. Do not mm. assume I could not do the same to you. See, Tom, you say shit like that and... I mean, don't get me wrong, Tommy. I love our philosophical conversations, honey, more than you. No, because you're like, you, 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 you just want to be human. I get it, but, buddy boy, you creep me the fuck out. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bitch. This is confusing. Where do we go with this? Down this way, maybe. Hmm. I don't understand what these... Who made all these tests? Who's the fucker I need to hate for it? I don't get the point. And how do I open that then? Oh, like this. Okay, so I want to get that beam through, I'm guessing. How does one do that? Don't I need another... thingy-majig? Don't I need to go in there? How does one get there? Hey, you could, you could help me. This fact that you can't complete these is bullshit. And we both fucking know it, let's be honest. What I don't understand is there's a room that's in here. How do we get- how do we open this door? That is the question. How do we- Can you get the- the line to hit that? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Okay. I kinda get it. Hold on. Maybe? Can I- how do you twist it? 
What is that doing? That's just blocking it. That's not what I want. I want... I want that little line to hit there, so we need to open this. Right? I want... I want that... That to go through here. But I don't understand... Oh! Hmm, well. That solves that. Okay, now that opens that up. And I can run. What's in here? Oh. Well, guess what? Wrong, 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 wrong. Fuck my life. All the way back, switch em. Switch em. Give me this. There, fuck you then, game. Fucking make me put shit a certain way. Fuck you. How about now, bitch? That's what I thought. Ugh. Oh. This is the crew's quarters. It looks abandoned. Great! Well, that's... Wait, was there a note? Notice. I do not need... I do not see the need for so many cameras. Tom's presence everywhere is slightly oppressive. I understand the need for transparency, but why is he in the toilets? I love the music so sad and is talking about how he's peeping on them. There's like pictures in there. Is there something in there that I need to see? There's a sticky note. Don't touch. This is the fifth time. Okay. Hmm. It's really sad. Can't believe he was watching them pee. Sarah Brooke. So this is Sarah's room. Okay, okay. Tom Touch OS. O o OS, it just says. Strange thermals on the west side of the crater. She's like making herself a note. <gasps> Sarah had a dog! Oh god, we gotta find Sarah, guys. It's imperative that we find Sarah. Look at all these fucking pencils. This bitch was fucking neat as hell. Dear Tom, knowing that you're always watching, I thought I would write you a letter. As you no longer reside in my mind, I've decided to transfer my thoughts to text. I want to do so in the form of a history lesson, a lesson that perhaps you'll find condescending, but it's likely more for my sake than yours. Alan Turing is considered a father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. Perhaps a lesser known part of his life with his, was his contributions to the field of biology. Why do you suppose his interests lay in those two d disparate fields? I assume it was because he believed the world to be logical and understandable. He was a mathematician. He seemed to believe that the great complexity of the universe would be explained with simple rules. Two years before his suicide in 1952, Alan Turing developed something called reaction diffusion systems. Inside the academic world, this work is cited more than his work on computers. It can be generally formalized as one line equation. There it is. I am no mathematician. However, in plain English, this equation describes things that wish to diffuse, however, also react with each other during this process. I'm sure this sounds strange to you, or at least very tang tangential, 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 I can't fucking speak, to our lives here on Europa. What, re re what relevance does it have to, to anything here? Reaction diffusion systems show how patterns are created. They show how the leopard how the leopard got its spots and how the zebra got its stripes. But my real interest here is Turing's interest, that nature can be formalized, that we can understand the natural world in mathematical terms. Turing created the test to answer the question, can a machine impersonate a human? The intrigue behind that being, can the human mind be simulated by a machine? Why ask that question? To prove that the human mind is a machine. I am not sure that is Turing's opinion, however, concerning consciousness, he states this. According to the most extreme form of this view, the only way by which one could be sure that a machine thinks is to be the machine and to feel oneself thinking. One could then describe these feelings to the world, but of course no one would be justified in taking any notice. Likewise, according to this view, the only way to know that a man thinks is to be that particular man. If the human mind exists within the physical world, it obeys the same rules of physics and chemistry as every other thing in this world. Therefore, like all of nature, it is merely reactive. 
It is curious that nature would create, through the mechanics of determin determinism, creatures that believe they have free will. Conversely, I suppose if we conclude that we are all machines, we only came to this conclusion in a predetermined manner. We cannot claim credit for our discovery as it is just a product of nature's genius, not our own. A humbling idea, I think, behaviorism. Maybe we are more similar than we think. I really like that. That's really fucking cool. Um, Sarah, I really hope you're not dead. I know you're dead, but bitch, you are fucking awesome. Look at, she's got fucking nice pillows. So she's got like a little, whatever that is. There's a picture, because we care. It's just a bunch of flowers and stuff. So she's like got science stuff in her room. She's got pills in her room. It's relusal capsules and it's for, I can barely read this shit, hold on. Sorry, I'm gonna twist this a lot and now it's upside down. One capsule for 12 hours orally. See the accompanying prescription. It's to protect from excessive light. Oh, you have to protect it from excessive light. I don't know what this medication is for, but I assume she needed to take something. We have Binder. She was documenting things. Oh, she was religious. Here's a cross. And Telomeres. She was reading she had a biology book out. Okay, so this is Sarah. So we... Sarah had a lot of stuff going on, and I like how she wrote a letter. I don't know why she would write to Tom, unless Tom was starting to feel more human. You know what I mean? Okay, Chris McLean's room. Um, His bed isn't as good, but he's got a little jersey here. His Canadian jersey. Guy probably played hockey, as we all know. Hockey's great. So he's got papers on the floor. I cannot click them. Another little gadget on the thing. Oh, there he is with his brother, I bet you. They're both training for stuff. He was, he's triplets. So he's, they're, they were twin. They're not twins. They're, they're two, two people of triplets. And here we see a photo ripped. Um, I'm pretty sure that they killed one of them. Oh, I love those kind of rocks. It's so pretty. I'd bring that to space. I feel that. Oh, did they beat him to death with a baseball bat? That, that's horrible. So this is the drilling report. So he was doing a report, it looks like. There's a knocked over chair and a torn up picture and a flask. Someone was drinking. Someone probably had anger issues maybe. He has a puck here. He was definitely a hockey player. And same kind of pills it looks like. And tele teleoperation room locked. There he is. They're, they're triplets. We know that. Okay. So. His room. This is interesting. This is really interesting. Um. So this is Soichi UI. His thing's unlocked. So we have. Here he is with his wife. Oh, They're so cute. Oh, he has the ring. Was he gonna propose to someone or is that his, his wife's old wedding ring? What the hell happened? Hi, Matthew. We've been studying organism 119. Please find attached scanning electron microscope image, which appears to show pilus formation. We hypothesize that this is a stress response due to high levels of radiation. We plan to infect a human cell line with organism 119 and perform radiation experiments with flow cytometry. Would this be appropriate? It would be great if you could get the department to look at the SEM image. Regards, Soichi. So that is the attachment. Hey Soichi, it was great to see this image. Wow, yet more complex life on Europa. I'm not, I can't read that. Might be worth looking at as it survives very high levels of radiation here on Earth. Similarly, you should consider looking at all of these different fucking huge science words. Produces pillion response to radiation and uses them to transfer d um, DNA. I'm kind of struggling to read this on that background. It's kind of hard. Perhaps your organism uses a similar mechanism. Have you considered that organism 119 is tran transferring or scavenging DNA as a method of surviving radiation? As you well know, in terms of radiation, Europa serves 5.1 SV per day, over 300,000 times the level on Earth. The organism must be evolved such a high resistance to radiation as a necessity of survival that said radiation beneath their, mel their molecular... Or Mo mo molecular, I don't know, is much lower due to the thick ice crust. Radiation experiments with flow cinematography look like an appropriate course of action. 
Hi, hey Matthew, we have attached an image confirming the organism 119 attaches to human cells. We will proceed with radiation experiments on these cell lines. We propose naming organism 119 Europa Radiophilius. What do you think, Soichi? Hi, Matthew, you have now run the ir ir radiation experiments and can now confirm that E. Radiophilius does indeed seem to confer resistance to radiation. See attached. We assume survival is due to DNA damage repair. We tagged various DNA repair enzymes. Okay, so something's amiss. We don't know what is performing the repair. The lab doesn't know how it could repair the DNA. Have you considered that another organism may be in a symbiotic relationship? Perhaps a virus. We ran a PCR in the human cells exposed to E. radiophilus to see if there was a pre virus present. We have discovered an unknown virus, which we named Unknown Europa Virus. So there was a virus on here. This is phenomenal. You need to sequence this. We finished sequencing it. D data is attached. It is a virus unlike anything we've ever seen. Maybe we have found a cure f for sen senescence. I can't see that. I can't understand. A form of biological a biological immortality. We are running some long-term tests on plants and mice to plants and mice to see the effects. The plants are clearly exhibiting longer lifespans than exposed when exposed to the organism. We don't have the facilities here to continue testing. We are going to. We are going on to human testing. We're going to use ourselves as subjects. It's the only way to accelerate the process. Okay, holy shit. So, um, this might be one of the trees. Probably not. That's just like a little plant thing in his room. So he's got a Rubik's Cube. So they were fucking, oh my god. They, they found an organism on this planet and they began testing... They're so cute. They began testing on themselves, and that is not good. So we have a watch here, another a Ru Rubik's Cube that's twisted a little bit. Oh my god, he played the violin. I am getting kind of nervous. There's Earth. There's a picture of Earth. He's got motion sickness relief. There's those pills again. And let's see. Oh boy. So what is it that you found then, Soichi? Chris. We found an extremophile an organism that can live in extreme conditions that survives massive doses of radiation radiation damages dna the extremophile is a virus living inside of it it scavenges dna from other organisms which the virus uses to repair the extremophile's damaged dna essentially they work together to survive in what's called a symbiotic relationship so what's the implication what does what does it do in some ways it is it is an immortal relationship. It doesn't seem to age biologically. Aging and death are ultimately caused by DNA damage. We have the ability to fix our DNA, but that ability is limited. This organism can repair damage caused by massive doses of radiation. If we could harness this power, we could potentially eliminate biological aging, what is known as series sense. So they're like they found like immortality is what they fucking found. So you found something that can make humans immortal. It not exactly. There are many causes of death other than DNA damage. It would not save you from trauma, brain damage, cardiac arrest, but it could potentially cure cancers and many genetic diseases and massively increase life expectancy. Oh my god. So I have a feeling that, um, this is not good. That's all I'm like, oh my god. This is crazy. So we got Mikhail. And we heard him talking to... Oh, he's painting. Look at that. That's so nice. He was talking... Are those needles? Those are needles. What the fuck? And there's paint on the floor. So there's needles on the floor. What the hell? He th that, that, that recording said he was disassociating. Remember that? He's the Russian guy. He's got needles all throughout his fucking room. And like a first aid kit. Something happened here. He's still got paint out and stuff, and what the hell is this? Hold on a second. That's just a bottle, and there's like needles everywhere. Ooh. Okay, oh, he had a dog. I would bring pictures of my pet too, honestly, frame it and shit. Okay, so we found another thing here. Okay, March 6, 2249, the whole team experienced nausea during a large electrical surge in Europa's atmosphere. I am concerned. This was not an instance of mass hysteria. Vital signs were affected. It caused a uniform surge in heart rate that was detected by in all members of the crew. I am reporting to ISA. March 7th. I reported that nauseous incident to the ISA. They offered an explanation of electrical disturbance to our central nervous system. That is ludicrous. An electrical surge large enough to affect our nervous system would have done more than make the team feel ill. I'm going to experiment with some shock therapy. I've discovered the electronic fields disturb our telemetry implants in a way I didn't expect. I've contacted the ISA. Strangely, Tom was not comfortable with my attempts to disturb the implant. 
The ISA have reported back informing me that I am not to disturb the implants. They have also encouraged me not to discuss this further with the team. I think he's swearing in Russian right there. I am continuing to investigate. March 11th. I have been running some experience outside of Tom's view. I can tell he knows this. He has been acting differently around me, like an offended child. I feel increasingly nauseous. These implants seem to have neural connectivity. Out-of-body experiences are more frequent now. I have established a definite correlation. Against my knowledge, I have been implanted with a device that affects my mind. I use my opportunities in regular health checkups to investigate the crew. We all have them. Every single one of us is implanted with some mind-altering contraption. Tom has been encouraging the team to worry about my mental health. He requested that I retire away from the crew. Misinformation. I cannot will myself to investigate this further. I grow tired quickly. I cannot think straight. I am not sure if the implant is affecting my thoughts anymore. I believe it is trying to subdue my mind. I think I'm going to attempt an excision. I am going to remove this implant. So it's been days now, April 4th. I am trying, I am typing with my left hand now. The excision went wrong. I have successfully removed the implant. Unfortunately, I lost my hand in the operation. Tom is very angry. The crew refused to talk to me. Apparently, I am a bad influence. Sarah patched me up. April 5th. I wonder if the nature of the organism and its disturbance of my DNA caused my awakening from Tom's influence. If so, that would make for a worrisome revelation, perhaps this organism is not so friendly. April 6, Dan informed me ISA have called for my termination. My masochistic experiments proves I am a danger to the mission. Fortunately, he chose not to lock me in the brig. I'm going to investigate this implant further. I have to hide my work. The team are becoming increasingly aggressive. They seem to oppose my work to understand the implant. It does not help that Tom is encouraging them to distru- distrust me. April 7, I have discovered the nature of the implant. It is a complex computer. It interfaces with the human mind directly. It seems to condition the mind through Pavilonian and instrumental conditioning, eliciting feelings of euphoria when the wearer is obedient and dysphoria when they are disobedient. It also has the effect of suppressing impulses in the frontal lobe, presumably to lower free will. It seems to interface crudely with motion neuron cells through the cerebellum. It is my hypothesis that the crew is controlled by this implant. That is their strong aversion to helping me. I need a method of suppressing its implant. Perhaps a drug? Rilazole. Maybe an antidepressant to minimize the conditioning effects. Combined with a strong electromagnetic field, I could use one of the industrial electromagnetics from the construction robots. I have managed to get Chris on my side. He has agreed to test some medicine... Medical procedures with me in private. I will be more difficult one-handed, but I must but I must persevere. I'm hoping to keep this out of the eyes of Tom, though I have a feeling he will still be listening. Okay. Holy fucking shit. So, on top... So that's why they were taking this drug. Everyone had this drug in their room. So eventually, I'm guessing with the fact that they had the, the drug in that room was a sign of... That they're all trying to counteract it. They all believed him after a while. Um... I'm going to keep going with this. Um, this episode's gone a little bit longer than I wanted it to. There's so much happening right now. We have that organism that they, they have started testing on themselves. Maybe the one... They said they... they hand, Tom said they handled it. And I have a feeling that one of the people... I think it's like Chris was the one that... He was testing the antidepressant one. Maybe he was the one that had taken the organism. Maybe they all had the organism in them. Either way, a lot is going on right now. And all I can think about right now is... Um, we're playing Ava. And Ava has that implant inside of her so that is not good on us i'm I'm assuming she has the implant on her i'm guessing that they put these implants on them before they came here i don't know but i want to keep going with this i definitely want to see maybe one of our crew members is still out there still out there still in here and i want to get to them and i want to figure this out the story is definitely within the writings and stuff it's definitely like within these little um things here i'm really glad i'm taking my time going through this because this story is very interesting the puzzles are good and i want to keep going so as always i'm last hattery thank you guys so much for joining me and i'll see you in the next one happy watching